Hello beautiful, welcome back to Nat's Beautiful Life. Today I'm going to be sharing with you some more uh, fall recommendations. And if you haven't seen my finally fall tag, I will put it up there in the cards and also in the description box below so that you can check out some of the books that I've already recommended. I kind of wanted to spill it up on my recommendations so we wouldn't have two hour long videos. If you are new to this channel, hello, my name is Natasha and I make videos on mostly books but also bullet journaling, some beauty, and I'm so glad that you're here today. If you like this video, if you like me, if you want to see more, give it a thumbs up and subscribe so you never miss a video. Uh, Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and jump in to what we've got. just wanted to sit down today have a little chill talky talk with you and just uh, recommend some books. So I'm going to split this up kind of in classics, YA, adult, and nonfiction. <laughs> um, but I've picked some good things that I think are going to be appropriate for October, the fall season, spooky season. Um, my criteria for picking books for this video were two or three things. One, they had to be very atmospheric, so you had to feel like you were there. You had to really feel the setting of the book. The other thing is they needed to have an interesting setting or character. And the third thing, which would be a bonus, if, if they are creepy or messed up. Um, not all of these are super creepy, but a lot of, they all have to be atmospheric and very interesting characters, setting, things like that. So, let's get into it. The first classic I'm going to mention is Lady Audley's Secret by Mary Elizabeth Braden. This is one of the first of the sensationalist novels of the uh, Victorian era and this follows Lady Audley, yeah, Audley, who marries Mr. Audley <laughs> and um, this fella that comes to visit him, I think it might be a relation to him, I can't remember, but he just feels like something's not right about this particular lady and we find him investigating this and we meet some uh, interesting characters and we also find out some interesting things about Miss Audley. I really recommend this book if you are at all interested in any Victorian literature, gothic literature, this is definitely um, gothic in nature and it's just a good time and uh, a warning if you are not used to Victorian literature it's very wordy but once it gets going and you get where you are and who the people are it usually just sets off and just keeps going and that's totally been one of my favorite books out of all the gothic classics I've read um, and it was one of my favorite books of the year a uh, year or two ago whenever I read it. The next one is pretty short. There's something, there's something in the air. Um, the Turn of the Screw by Henry James. This book is very short, like I said, but this is not only atmospheric, it is spooky. It is a ghost story. It is creepy. It is children and a governess and there are people walking the grounds that why are they walking the grounds who are these people and um it is a story in which a man is telling the story of this particular situation to his friends and they're all kind of creeped out um i recommend this go into it blind um ruth wears uh, what is it called turn of the key is loosely based on this but this is better. <laughs> um, but yeah, I I recommend this if you are wanting something a little bit spookier during this time of year. The next book is going to be Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. Du Maurier. Du Maurier. Why can't I don't speak French? Sorry. But this book, um, we follow a, a lady who is never named. Our narrator is the new wife of this gentleman. And he goes, uh, takes her back to his home, and Rebecca is somehow still there. Maybe not in person, maybe not in, uh, you know, in the way, but everything about Rebecca is still in everybody's minds. And I am not all the way through this book yet, so I'm interested to see how things go, but I've heard a lot of people just five stars and rave about it and it's their favorite book so I'm excited to get to this and finish it this month 
So um, if you want to read this with me and discuss it, let me know. All right, the next one is Frankenstein. Frankenstein uh, is not this big. Most of this is commentary. Um, so uh, if I find myself like really loving this book, I'm going to get the, uh, the Penguin Cloth edition of it because it's gorgeous. But this is a Episcopal novel. So it's a novel told in letters. And um, I'm looking forward to getting to this. I want to get this to this this month. If not, it will be next month. But everyone who's anyone is like just losing their mind at this time of year. Like you got to read Frankenstein. You've got to um, have your own thoughts about them. So if you, again, want to read this one with me, grab it and let's go. All right, now we're moving on to some another book that I've read. Um, I always recommend the Sherlock Holmes series. Um, it starts with the study, A Study in Scarlet. The second book is The Sign of Four. And then the third book is actually The Adventures in The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes. This is, of course, a detective mystery story. And it is uh, episodic, I would say. I don't know if that's the right word to use. But you do want to read them in order. The reason is because his life is not only, and Watson's life, are not only like a part of the story, you know, as they grow and as they meet people, as they do things, it's within their life as they're solving these mysteries. And they can also refer back to old mysteries while they're solving new mysteries. So you do want to read them in uh, order, but I do recommend them. They're great. Let's move on to some YA and some books that you probably read in one sitting. Um, first one I have here is Monday's Not Coming by Tiffany D. Jackson. I am a fan of Tiffany D. Jackson. Um, this is one where uh, our main character, Claudia, has her friend Monday and she goes to school. She's been away for the summer, hasn't heard from her best friend, goes back to school, my friend doesn't show up, and she is convinced that something has happened to Monday, but no one is um, doing anything about it. And it's right there in the very beginning, the very first sentence is, my, my friend Monday left here. Let me see if I can find it and read it to you. But um, you find out quickly that this is the story of how my best friend disappeared, how nobody noticed she was gone except me, and how nobody cared until they found her one year later. So. It's very intriguing how it was hidden that this girl was missing, how nobody could really get to the bottom of it, and also when they did, how heads rolled. Like, you know, it, but also it's a psychological thing because you have Claudia dealing with all of this. I read this in one day. It's incredibly easy read. Uh, I love Tiffany D. Jackson's writing, and um, I recommend this one this time of year because it is weird. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention was all of the Maureen Johnson books that are um, kind of recent. So she has her Truly Devious series that is out. Um, that is a quick, easy read, and uh, the audiobooks are not bad either. And the most recent book that came out is in that same world, but it's not connected as far as like to the to the the crime. But we have a box in the woods, and that is a standalone. And to me, that's the best one because I listened to the audiobook and the crime that Stevie, who is our main character, who solves crime, uh, the the crime takes place in the 1970s, uh, like 1978 four teenagers in the woods that got murdered and uh, some of them their bodies were found in a box it was horrific and you know it was just one of those slasher kind of teen movie like reminders of like that era and it was so it was like I was a little like creeped out <laughs> listening to it and that part is like so good. If you've uh, ever read or listened to any of her stories, you know that you go from the crime, the time, like the time of the crime happening, and then you go to present day and you go back and forth. And so you really are involved in the crime portion as well as the solving portion. And you're 
trying to put all these things together. Um, I think the Box in the Woods is definitely my favorite, but I do recommend them all. The next one is Be Not Far From Me from Minnie McGinnis. This is very atmospheric as it takes place in the wild. Uh, she was raised by her father to be um, very able to survive in the wilderness. Um, I think he owned like a hiking, camping like store or something. I don't remember, but um, they did long distance hikes and all of that stuff. She gets lost in the woods and she's very hurt. Um, this, at times, this book will leave you like so like, I, I don't even know how to describe it, like cringing because of all the things that she has to do to stay alive and to keep herself from getting infection and all of this stuff. Um, an excellent survival story and it's a pretty short book. Um, it, yeah, I, I recommend it for this time of year as well because it's got that weird thing going on of, and then, yeah, so <laughs> I don't want to give away, but there's like also another person who like a year before went into the woods and never came out and so she's kind of got that in mind as well as trying to stay alive all this stuff highly recommend and plus Minnie McGinnis writes some really messed up characters and things and I think this is probably the least messed up character she's written but as far as like the actions she has to go through it's up there <laughs> all right and the next one um for the last one I think for um, YA. I'm going to recommend, I, I hate this cover but it's what they had, um, the Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children. Don't watch the movie. Do not watch the movie. Don't watch the movie. If you've watched the movie, forget it. It is not the same. Um, I want to show you this. This is basic, this is the second book. This is basically what the rest of the covers kind of look like because this book is really unique in, in that it is not only great story, but Ransom Riggs, who is the author, uh, collects, I'm trying to find, this should be mine, he collects old photographs. And so he has written stories around these photographs. So he makes the people in the photographs a part of the story, a part of the, as part of the characters and things like that and it's a very interesting it's a unique story so not only do you have kind of the weirdness of these um, peculiar children and these photographs and stuff but it is very atmospheric and it's just a unique story okay so let's move to some adult stuff um, first one I'm going to mention is The Secret History by Donna Tartt um, there are also books like um, If We Were Villains and I believe one called Madam. I actually have those here, but um, anything that is dark academia, uh, kind of settings, weird schools and stuff, I think is always appropriate for the fall. Um, this one is based on a group of Greek students who basically, I think they like worship almost this a professor of theirs who's very eccentric and weird and this book is messed up this is all kinds of messed up characters um, go into it blind you know somebody dies but because they tell you right off but just just go with it and here's the thing with Donna Tartt her writing is immaculate it's beautiful even if you don't like her stories <laughs> um, her writing is just a treat I just, I love it. And so I'm like, anything that comes out by her, I want to read it, but I know I'm usually going to be let down at the end a little bit, but whatever, it's a whole other story. Um, on with that particular uh, set of Dark Academia things, um, Vicious and Vengeful, these were made for fall. Um, Vicious is our first one and it can be a standalone but I really enjoyed uh, Vengeful as well. Um, but you've got two guys in school, they're friends, and they find out that uh, you can become a super hero or super villain, whichever. Um, you can have superpowers if you have a near-death experience. And so they give it a shot and they get superpowers and 
Um, things happen where one of the characters goes to prison, he's getting out, and he is looking for some type of revenge. And little do we understand why the other one is looking for him as well, uh, for whatever reason. So that's the gist of this book, but there's so much more to it. There's a found family in here. There's obviously revenge and also um, high stakes because you're, you're also there going back and forth between the past and the present, learning about how they be got these powers. And then Vengeful, we meet our brand new, um, yeah, Marcella. Marcella is going to be like your favorite supervillain ever when you read this book. Um, I don't understand why some people don't like this book for some reason, but a lot of people are like me and are just so happy that this book has come out because we got Marcella. Marcella is the main female protagonist that becomes a superhero in this book and boy oh boy does she get her revenge and mm, yeah good times they are about due for a reread from me <laughs> um talking about some more very atmospheric books uprooted by naomi Novik. i have read this multiple times this is one of my favorite books of all time there are um magic woods or dark woods there's a um magician I guess you call him not really magician what is he called a wizard <laughs> there's a wizard there's a little town that gets protection from the wizard by giving him a daughter every 10 years and there you go just just pick up the book and read it it's super atmospheric because of this particular um, area that they're in this valley and uh, it's just it's just got all the fall vibes to it of just mm, there's like there's like a king or a prince that comes and he's like not a good guy and then you've got our main character Agnieszka who is um the girl chosen to go live with the the, the dragon that's what they call this wizard but it's just his name there are all, there's also like the eagle and the, the you know whatever they're just named after animals but so good. Um, and Naomi Novik's, Naomi Novik's writing is pretty awesome, I think. I'm just going to stop right there because I can gush over that for a long time. I'm um, going to also mention The Atlas Six. I have not read this yet. This is by um, Olive, Olivia Blake. I haven't read this yet. However, it sounds like my jam, which is why I bought it. Um, it has to do with the... Library in Alexandria, maybe it didn't burn down. Maybe it's being protected by this secret society. And we have six people who are going to um, be tried out to see if they can be a part of the society that helps protect them. But um, only five people are going to be accepted. And I think that's the simple gist of the book. But that sounds very academic and very cool. Um, I really want to read this in October. Really hoping I get to it. I am, I've got so many books on my TV for, TBR for October. It's crazy. Um, almost done here. So I've got How to Stop Time by Matt Haig. This is one of my favorite books. Um, I, I love Matt Haig anyway, but we are following a man who ages very, very slowly. We are following him for centuries. There is a mystery and a corruption kind of uh, thing going on within the society of people who age slowly. So uh, all the people who age like this, they typically are a part of the society to be either be controlled or to keep uh, it a secret that they exist. And he's just trying to live his life. And then he finds out something really interesting about his daughter. And then he's trying to find her as well. So good times. Really good atmospheric book. You're like I said, you're following him from Shakespeare to present day. It takes place in um, London, I believe, and it's it's really awesome. And if you notice, there's a dog on the cover. Matt Haig tends to to like to put a dog into his uh, books with his his peeps. All right, so last one of these is the um, Mexican Gothic here. 
This is, it takes place in the 50s. It is definitely a gothic tale. It takes place in Mexico in a small town where there is a big mansion estate thing. So our main character, her cousin marries a man and moves to this estate. She gets a letter from her that's basically like, help me, and she goes to check it out. And this is another one of those books that will make you cringe because you're like, that is gross. <laughs> Um, these people are weird and you're thinking to yourself and like she is one of the people our main character is almost the, the same like look cousin you can come with me or you can stay but I'm getting out of here because this is weird that that'd be totally me I'm like you can stay or you can go but I'm leaving and that's basically kind of her thing but she's also like I what is going on here you know what do I even care let's just get out of here but she's trying to find a way to get to her cousin to get her so that she could find out like are you okay do you want to go because we can go kind of thing um this book is this is something i was not what i expected at all so i'm just going to tell you if you go in like that it's not going to be what you expect at all because there is a massive creep factor all right um last book and it is a non-fiction it is the butchering art by lindsay fitzharris I do not know why it does not say Dr. Lindsay Fitzherrits because she is a doctor, uh, I believe a PhD. But um, this book will make you cringe because it talks about real things. And so we've got um, before uh, Joseph Lister is um, mentioned in here. And so he's trying to convince people germs exist, wash your hands, blah, blah, blah. But it also talks about before um they had means of putting people out for surgery they only did surgery when they absolutely had to and they did it as quickly as possible because the people were wide awake when they were getting butchered and that's why they called them butchers um they're mm, yeah as someone who's had 23 procedures in her life in fact five within the past three years one last month i can assure you that i am so thankful for the results of this book and the people a part of it because i can't imagine not only being in the hospital with all of this grossness because people got sicker in the hospital than out because they put all the sick people together but didn't know about germs or cleanliness or washing hands or keeping the coughing people away from the non-coughing people. And then also the fact that surgery was so, like you were awake. And I, I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you, I wrote a paper about this in college. When I had my first heart procedure, I had awareness, which means that's when you wake up from your, your anesthesia. And apparently, Apparently it takes extra something or other to put people with red hair out. It sounds like a myth, but apparently it's a real thing. And I woke up and let me tell you, I never want to go through that again. And I can't even imagine uh, going just like being completely awake, held down while people are hacking on you. That was bad enough, but oh my word. Anyway. I'm going to stop this video now. I hope that you have found something cool to read this fall uh, in this pile of books that I've just shared with you. Very slipped in his ears. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you again very soon right here on Nat's Beautiful Life. Have a great day, gorgeous.